Okay, I wanted to shoot a video today talking about the lateral load forces that go into the front end when you turn left. I saw a video at DRP Performance. This guy is super sharp. I've been oogling over his spindle jigs for years. But this got me thinking about what I was mentioning before, so I want to shoot a video and explain what I'm talking about. So let's roll the intro and let's start talking about lateral load forces on the front end. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. One thing we always have to keep in mind when talking about these forces is this is kinematic. There's two types of forces that go in the chassis roll and roll centers in the front. First is kinematic and that is through all your linkages and control arms and the next one is elastic that goes through the springs. A combination of these is what you feel as a roll center going in a corner. So what I'm going to explain today does not define everything that's going on on your front end when you go to turn left and go into the corner. Another note I want to make is I'm going to suggest maybe changing your front end, but instead of building spindles and changing frame mounts and everything how racing if you run their ball joints will sell stems at different heights you can swap them out for your ball joints and you can basically extend or lower spindle heights based on their just changing pins it's much cheaper and much easier and much faster to do this than putting a ton of time into a spindle or a chassis mod just to find out it's not what you want to do anyways. So I always recommend how ball joints because they have a ton of different stem heights to get you going. First, I want to talk about what goes into these forces, and I have a diagram we're going to go over on the drawing board, and I'll explain it much clearer there. But basically, when you put a force through a rod, if the rod is on an angle, it's going to want to straighten out. So those points are running level, and that's a big key issue when you're thinking about how these forces get loaded in the front end. The tire grip is what initiates the load. So when you go to turn left, the tire will actually put a load on the lowers and then the uppers. On the left front, it'll actually try to push the frame to the outside because the tire is going to want to load and straighten up and pull that frame actually to the inside of the car if you're turning left. It'll actually try to pull that frame in because it's going to want to scrub the tire. But what goes on with the left front upper then is it actually tries to push on that left front upper control arm is because it wants to twist so it'll all pivot around that center axis of your spindle so the left front actually pushes in and actually tries to straighten that up so what happens to your upper is it'll straighten out and what happens to your lower then if it's going this way will straighten out what this does then on the left front is it'll actually push down on the bottom part of the frame 
and actually push up on the upper part of the frame. Now this is a small percentage, but it will actually put an anti-dive or an anti-roll into that left front. The right front also will have a little bit of anti-roll built into it with the kinematics. When you to go to straighten that right front out, what's going to happen is that tire pulls on that and actually tries to straighten, actually push up on the chassis. But because we run such a soft spring up there, it still wants to roll up on that front end or on that right front. There's something else really interesting going on there though. Because when you roll the car and that left front control arm is actually, the mounting points on the frame are actually higher than the right front mounting points, I believe it actually creates a collapsing motion and actually pushes the right front down. And you'll be able to see this better when I show you the diagram in a little bit. So let's go to the drawing board and we'll look at this because I think this will all come to light once you see some pictures and some diagrams of this on how this all works. It'll be much clearer at that point. Okay. Let's look at this front end diagram. There's a lot of stuff going on here that affects the loading and unloading and rolling of the car. And you have to take in mind that this is only part of the equation. This is the kinematic side. There's also an elastic side to roll centers that goes through springs. So what I'm going to show you is a small part of the equation. But let's look on the lower control arms right now. The left front tire will pull on that left front lower control arm and try to straighten it out. Since it's going downhill towards the spindle, it's actually going to put leverage on that lower control arm mount and try to pull that left front chassis down just a percentage. It's not a huge lever because the difference is very small, but there is a percentage there. With the right front lower, it's actually the tire is pushing on the right front chassis and trying to straighten it out. So you're actually getting a lift to that right front chassis. But the interesting thing going on here also is my old rule of thumb of having nothing going past center. When it goes past center, it really creates havoc. So when a chassis rolls, you always want those lower control arms angled so they never go past center and try going the other way. That's why we run those lowers uphill towards the spindle on the right and downhill towards the spindle on the left. So when that chassis is in a roll or in a lift and dive situation, those lower control arms never go past center. Now on the upper control arms. The upper control arms actually on the left front actually provide a lifting situation there. So she kind of splitting the force because we do have 11 to 13 degrees on the left front upper control arm. The thing about the left front upper control arm is people are still chaining or limiting their left front uppers a little bit and I would always limit that left front control arm so that control arm ends up flat but never goes past center. When in a chassis roll situation, you want that left front no more than flat in a droop. 
On the right front upper control arm, that you put a lift because when you put a rod in a tension situation, it's always going to want to straighten itself out. So technically, it's going to want to lift that right front upper control arm inner pivot or frame pivot up to straighten that rod out. But here is something interesting I don't think everybody takes in mind is look at the height difference between the left front upper pivot and the right front upper pivot. If you draw a line through there, the left front upper pivot, because of the less of the angle, will be above the right front pivot. And I believe that that left front pivot will actually start to help collapse that right front. That's why we want to drop that right front pivot down to get about 19 degrees. The height difference in the front will try to roll that car onto the right front onto the spring just because of the height difference there. On the lower control arm, we try to put those, I believe, close to level in the frame because your rack runs level in the frame. Any height difference, the left front or the left front lower control arm will happen at the spindle side. That's why I think it's critical now that people start experimenting with spindles. You want to find speed in your car, you want to find traction in the front end, start playing with spindles. The thing I like about how ball joints is that they have replaceable stems of different lengths. You can easily build a new ball joint by sticking a longer or shorter stem in there and altering that lower control arm angle without changing the inner pivot mounts and without building another spindle. So keep that in mind. If you have an idea on something, you can buy a ball joint pin. I think they're probably between $30 and $40 rather than building a whole new spindle just to try these things out. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the front end there, and I think there is a lot of room for experimentation especially when you get into combining the elastic and the kinematics, spring rates and everything else. This is the final frontier in making changes. I think the rules and everybody with the rules now has clamped down on the, the rear suspension so hard that this front end stuff is going to make a big difference in the future, especially when we're talking about cars being so aero tight and aero push. You get behind people, people are talking about taking the air off the front ends. You're going to want to stick your front ends now through kinematics and through good elastic transfers and everything there. This is a wide open area. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. This will tell YouTube to just, when I get a new video up and you log into YouTube, it'll say, hey, I have a video up. It's nothing spammy. We're not going to send you an email or anything. So like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.